If, you're, if you have an IQ of under 82, you can't be inducted into the American Armed Forces. And the reason for that is the armed forces have done IQ testing for a very long time. And they're hungry for people always. So they're not going to throw away anybody that they can use. If you want someone to run your company, you want a conscientious person. If you want a teacher, you want a conscientious teacher. Um, it's not associated with artistic creativity. That's, that predicts liberalism. That's openness. In any case, Mark Maggie Thatcher is extremely conscientious, and she believes that hard work will get you there, and, and that should be encouraged. And, and everyone can pull themselves up by their own bootstraps. And look, there's truth in that. If you look at what predicts people's success across time, this is where psychology is actually reliable as a science. Um, we know some of what predicts life outcomes, and we know it validly and reliably. So the best predictor is IQ. And that accounts for about 25% of the differences in outcome between people. So a lot's left unexplained, right? 75%. But 25% is a lot. Um, the next best predictor is conscientiousness. And it accounts for about 5 to 9%. Which again, isn't leaves a lot unexplained, but it's not nothing. And then the third one is how sensitive you are to negative emotion. And it accounts for something like 3 to 4%. Um, so it is definitely the case that if you took two people that are equal in some valuable domain, the one that works harder is going to do better, and that might even compound over time. But if you take two people of radically different IQ and they both work equally hard, the person with the higher IQ is going to crush the person with, with the lower IQ. And, you know, you said we know that, and... And, but we don't, because you can't even talk about IQ in modern society. It's such a hot topic, and it's not surprising. It's, I, I know the IQ literature for a variety of reasons, partly because I built tests to predict performance and, and studied that for 15 years. Um, and uh, my tests couldn't sell, at least in part because they actually worked and were too threatening <laughs> because of that. Well, and there's reasons for that. But... Uh, if, you're, if you have an IQ of under 82, you can't be inducted into the American Armed Forces. And the reason for that is the Armed Forces have done IQ testing for a very long time. And they're hungry for people always. So they're not going to throw away anybody that they can use. They found that they couldn't teach anybody with an IQ of under 82 anything that made them valuable. They were a net drain. And that's 10% of the population. So that's, there's about as many people with an IQ of 82 or lower as there are of people who are capable of doing well in a, an institute of higher education. So, and, and among that population, those who work harder are going to do better. But, but in a cognitively complex environment, they're at a marked disadvantage. And the conservatives can't deal with that. They don't know what right. to do about that. And right. fair enough. You know, it's like, it's a very hard problem. And the liberals, they say, the liberals take the opposite tack, which is even more annoying in my estimation. It's like, well, you can train anyone to do anything. And that's, that's so wrong that, that it's hard to even know where to begin. I'd love it if it was the case. I'll give you an example of this. So the Americans, in their war on poverty, ran a program called Head Start. And Head Start was a program that everyone wanted to succeed, conservatives and liberals alike. And so the idea was get disadvantaged kids early and enrich their education, say, between the ages of three and five, preschool. So the Americans poured immense monetary resources into this project. And... and it has been studied in terms of outcomes for decades. And its goal was to increase cognitive performance. That was its goal. And it did, but the, di but the differences went away. So the hope was if you got the kids early and taught them, they'd, get, they'd develop an advantage and then that advantage would compound across time. And it would ameliorate the worst effects of poverty. And who wouldn't want that, right? Like, I don't care who you are, everyone wants that. Um, 
The kids did leap ahead academically, but all the other kids caught up by grade three or four. And then after that, there was no differences at all between the Head Start kids and the non-Head Start kids, except the Head Start kids were less likely to get pregnant and drop out of school, and they were more likely to graduate. But that looks like it was a socialization effect. Probably some of those kids were shielded against the worst of their family environment by being in daycare, but there was zero effect on cognitive ability. Very unfortunate, right? Because because that was that was a large scale social experiment. Everyone had the highest hopes for it. No effect on cognitive ability. What you're talking about, Jordan, is actually the great taboo in education. I I, I was a teacher for many many years. My my head the head deputy head would go to me in the primary school. Why is it that you know this cohort aren't doing as well as last year's cohort? And it was seen as taboo to just go, well, last year's cohort was smarter. Yeah. No and one no one can tolerate IQ. Look, it's the only thing psychologists have ever discovered, really, except for maybe the big five. It's like these are facts. Eh? IQ is unbelievable. It's easy to measure. To, to measure IQ, all you have to do is take any set of questions that require abstraction to answer. And so you can take 20 questions. You can do that, you know, better or worse, but with 20 random questions, you're going to get a decent estimate. So take 20 questions, ask 100 people the answers, sum up the answers, rank order the people. That'll be correlated with IQ at something like 0 0.8, 0 0.9, really high, really high. That's all you have to do. And then that'll be predicted with their life or that'll predict their life outcomes, like economic, economic success, for example, that'll account for about 25% of the difference across people. It's unbelievably powerful. And it's unidimensional as well. You know, you hear all these appalling claims that there are multiple kinds of intelligences and multiple kinds of learning styles and skills. And look, people, people differ in their abilities and they're not all reducible to IQ. But in the, in the realm of intellectual endeavor, it's one factor, it's one thing, one thing. It's not decomposable. Not, not really. And, and that's harsh, man. It's harsh. Let me ask this question, Jordan, because I feel like it's begging to be asked. And you, you've teased that you've put us in a position where I have to ask you this question, uh, given the way that you've been talking about this. And that question is, I mean, it comes obviously, what is our fear of this conversation? There is, I feel it. I sense it as mm. we talk about this. There Look, is some kind would... of Pandora's box at the end of this conversation. It, um... It violates our moral sensibility. You know, we, we deeply believe that human beings are of equal value. It's a right. predicate of, well, I think it's probably a predicate of human biology in some sense, but maybe not. But in any case, because you could make a case that we're aristocratic by nature too, but forget about that. Certainly, it's, a, it's the fundamental axiom of the West. Everyone's equal before the law. We're all of equal value in that transcendent sense. Okay. Well, what does that mean practically? Well, what we hope it means is that we're sort of roughly equal in ability or trainability at least. And we're not. And no one, that doesn't sit well with us. We don't even know what to do with it. We're very uneasy with it. And then it's no wonder. Now, ignoring it isn't going to help. And also, what also isn't going to help is... You know, in Boston, for example, recently they shut down a lot of the gifted programs because the ethnic makeup of the classes was un unacceptable. It wasn't randomly, it wasn't randomly selected, let's say, or, ra or it wasn't uh, representative of the broader community. And it's no wonder that that bothers people. Who wouldn't that bother? But what are we going to do? In that situation, you shut down the gifted classes. Well. Who are those gifted classes for? Are they for the gifted kids or are they for society at large? There isn't anything more valuable than human intelligence. And if we don't utilize it, well, then we let it go to waste. Well, how can that be in anyone's interest? It's a resource that we should maximally exploit, even for our own narrow self-interest. But we can't. And so gifted programs, they're always, people are never happy with them or even with the idea. You know, you can be a, you can you can celebrate differences in athletic ability and we certainly do. We're very uneasy when we celebrate differences in intellectual ability. It's kind of a non-starter.